Joining us now is our panel, YouTuber and commentator Daisy Cousins. Always a great pleasure to see her. And Sky News host James McPherson, who you can see at 10 o'clock tonight on The Late Debate. Evening to you both. I want to start with Prince Harry. I, I, I don't know why, but I'm sort of fascinated. This is like a slow train wreck. Uh, Daisy, to you first. There he is in court uh, claiming that the tabloids have ruined his life. Uh, this is the bloke who's made millions of dollars out of a book, uh, an interview with Oprah Winfrey, and he's complaining about publicity. <laughs> Look, it's it's a fairly extraordinary and sad circumstance, isn't it? I mean, Prince Harry, he, he's, he's gone in um, alleging very, very strongly that all of this information that's been portrayed in certain articles about him over the years was obtained illegally by the evil tabloid newspapers. But it seems that under cross-examination, sort of the, the case he's gone through it, and one after the other, it's turned out that uh, this really from Harry seems to be mainly speculation, as one after another and another, that the, uh, the sources were revealed to be completely completely legal and in fact Steve uh, the bit that I liked the best was one article that Harry claimed to have been sourced illegally um, the source actually turned out to be himself uh, from an interview that presumably he'd forgotten he'd given two days before the article went to publication uh, so that's how it's going for Prince Harry the best bit of course is said that he's gone in um, for Meghan Markle and this is why he's doing it to stop all the abuse and the intrusion well hello they're the ones putting out all the net Netflix content and stuff. They love the intrusion, Steve, but the thing is they only love it when they control it and it's positive about them. They just want positive press. They certainly don't want privacy. James, I think uh, Harry's been watching too many James Bond movies. He's got vehicle trackings and phones hacked. Half of the leaks to the, the, the tabloids in, in Britain came from within his own family. I mean, there's evidence that, you know, Charles was leaking and Diana, I know for a fact, used to uh, tip the tabloids off as to where she was going so she could get her picture in the paper to annoy her husband, the now king. <laughs> Look, this whole ordeal has been a disaster for Harry. And if he had family who were still talking to him, family would have told him, don't do this. He's made a complete fool of himself. He spent thousands of dollars exploring his feelings in California, only to find that in a British court of law, his feelings are interesting, but not that relevant. It's very different, he's discovered, sitting before a judge rather than sitting before Oprah. Um, electric vehicles, I want to talk about those. I don't like them particularly myself. I wouldn't buy one. They're still too expensive. And if you drive anywhere out of town by more than about 500 k's, you can't charge the bloody things. Uh, but the Andrews government in their budget last year uh, said to anyone who wanted to buy an electric vehicle, Daisy, we'll give you $3,000 toward the purchase of your vehicle. Doesn't help when the thing costs 80 grand. But quietly yesterday, this was completely dropped because Victoria's broke and can't afford to pay this anymore. What's that say about the revolution of electric vehicles that the Labor government in Victoria was keen on? Well, look, this is uh, interesting coming from, you know, the Socialist Republic of Victoria of all places. I mean, they're, they're so woke and they're so <laughs> green and they're so obsessed with all this climate change stuff. You'd, you'd think, Steve, that if it was just so terribly important that we all have electric vehicles or the planet's going to, you know, burn up, that they'd be doing absolutely everything uh, to keep this little subsidy in place. But no, it seems to be one of the first things they've just turfed out the front door when it realizes that when they've realized they've made themselves broke because of their ridiculous uh, COVID policies. Um, I, look, personally, I actually like electric vehicles. I'm, an, I'm a non-driver because I'm epileptic, but I really like it when I drive, when someone drives me in an electric vehicle. It's really, really fun. So I think it's kind of a shame. But as you said, the things cost like 80 grand. I mean, what on earth is $3,000 going to really do towards getting you an electric vehicle? So the, the, the irony here is, is, is fairly extraordinary, that's for sure. James, I reckon you would have loved the fact that Rowan Atkinson, known as Mr Bean, who was a big fan of electric vehicles, an early adopter, he's yeah. suddenly woken up that these things uh, cost so much to make, the batteries drain so much energy out of, the, uh, out of the, the grid that these things are actually not environmentally friendly at all. 
Exactly, and that's the big point from this is that electric vehicles don't stack up without government subsidies, and that summarises most of the renewable energy industry. But the funny thing about this is Dan Andrews loves to, to brag about the fact that Victoria is the most progressive state in the country. Well, now it's the only state in the country that doesn't offer subsidies for electric vehicles. In fact, they offer disincentives because they charge electric vehicle drivers a road tax to make up for the excise fuel levy that they don't pay. But of course, you know, when you're $171 billion in debt, you don't have spare change to change the global temperature by paying people to drive Teslas. Absolutely. Well said, James. Thank you. And I, don't, I, do, I do note uh, that no one in the Gander's government drives an electric vehicle. Thank you for both of you for joining us. <laughs>